All right, welcome to part eight. This is the final part of the calculator series. There is one thing I forgot to do in the last episode, but it's kind of optional. I'm gonna go over it anyways because it does make it nicer, and this is what it, this is what was included in the original calculator. So we have this clear button here, and what this clear button should also be doing is clearing the mode. So we can do that with just a torch here and a redstone. And now when we press this clear button, it resets the mode to nothing. So, and then this clear button should also clear the multiplier and divider, just like the modes we're doing earlier. So you can do that to take this clear line, follow it out, and make it so that when it's pressed, it activates the clear for the multiplier here and the divider over there. So again, that part is optional, but it does make it a little bit cleaner so that uh, when you hit the clear button, everything goes away and you can start from the beginning instead of just having to switch off of a mode every time. So with that out of the way, the only thing we have left to do on this calculator is convert this 16-bit binary answer into the five digits of VCD on the display. And to do that, we're going to use an algorithm called the Double Dabble algorithm. Um, so a guy named Newomaster I was watching on YouTube had a really good video on this, and I'm pretty much going to go over his exact video. He has a schematic for it, which has a really good explanation and all that stuff, so I'm going to go over it myself really quick. But if you have any questions at all, I highly recommend checking his video out. It's really cool. And this is the schematic for it. So all it is is the blue is your binary input and then the red is gonna be your BCD output. This black bar is separating the digits. So this first four red is your first digit and then the next one is your next digit. So uh, 16, eight, four, I have them labeled here. So let's see what happens when we put in a 16. This orange guy says, hey, if my input is greater than four, add three to it. Otherwise do nothing. So this goes into here, and this orange guy is seeing an eight. I know it's actually putting in a 16, but to him, it looks like it's an eight, according to his inputs. So eight is greater than four, so we're gonna add three to it. Eight plus three is 11, and 11 is an eight, a two, and a one. And so we just converted 16 in binary to BCD, because this digit right here is a six, and this digit right here, if you were to expand this out with all these being zero, this digit is a one, one, six, and you can see how that would line up perfectly on our display. Then once you expand it to 16 bits, which is what we need, it looks like this. And you can see all these orange are the exact same. They all do, if it's greater than four, it adds three. And you have five digits of BCD in your output. So starting from the right, this would be one, two, four, etc. So we go to eight, 16, 32, 64. I'm just gonna show you 64 uh, as an example, but obviously you can put in any combination of this, any 16 bit number you want, and it should accurately show its BCD digits. So 64, we follow this up and it gets put into here. This guy is just seeing a one, because if you just look at him, his only input is its rightmost one, and to him that's just a one. So it outputs a one. This guy sees a two, so it just outputs a two. This guy sees a four, so he just outputs a four. And then finally, this guy sees an eight, and eight is greater than four, so he's gonna spell out 11, um, which is an eight, a two, and a one. So now we have two guys going at the same time. This guy sees a six, and six plus three is nine, because six is greater than four, so he needs to add three to it. And then over here, we have just a one, so you're just gonna output a one. This guy sees a three, and a three is fine. It just outputs a three. This guy sees a two, and so you're just gonna output a two. Now, if we look at our BCD, we got 64. This digit right here, zero, one, one, zero. This is a six, zero, one, zero, zero. This is a four. So our display would show 64. So according to this, all we need to make this device is to make one of these orange guys, copy it a bunch of times, and make sure it's lined up correctly according to the schematic, and then we're good to go. So I would do a tutorial for it, but Newomaster already has a really good tutorial for just one of these orange pieces. It's pretty much as fast as it gets. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done, just to show you how big this thing gets. But even though it is really big, each of these devices, these all resemble the orange things in the schematic, each of these devices is only two ticks, which is insane. So it's still really fast, and we can try the thing over here with the example if you put in 64. 
it goes through and it comes out with 64. If you're not worried about speed, you can just, I've showed a lot about like decoders and encoders in this tutorial. So I'm sure you can make your own device and it would be bigger and slower, but as long as you follow the schematic, it would still work. So you can just do that or you can follow Nuo Master, but those are your two options. At this point in the tutorial, I'm just gonna assume you made it and I'm gonna start getting these outputs and inputs ready for us to paste it in. So for the one in the display, we're gonna have to annoyingly, we have to reverse all of these. Because if you remember when I did the 16 and it looked like this, if we plug that into here, it shows up backwards. It shows up as 61,000. So it doesn't really matter how you do this, but in some way you have to reverse all of these. So make it so that uh, all the way on the left, there's uh, it connects to that outmost input and all the way on the right, it connects to this leftmost input. Okay, so what I did is I just took them all out, I stacked it back here, and then had them all like flip up on top of each other. And so that way now you can look at them from the side here, and the one all the way on the right lines up to being the one all the way on the left when it gets put in, and yeah. So that successfully reverses them, but unfortunately we have another problem, <laughs> because this lowest one on the very end is supposed to be the one. And if you look, it is going into the right number, but the BCD is reversed as well. Like each individual packet of four is also reversed because instead of a one, it's giving us an eight. So on top of the reversing I already have, I also need to build a mini like one through four reverser thing for each BCD digit. So this makes it so that uh, the one goes into the four two goes into the three and yeah, just this four gets flopped and we need to do that for each digit. So now this is the highest bit. This should be the eight on the highest digit and it is. So we're gonna copy this reversing device and so stack here, bring it up. down, span one, stack four. So finally, this is our BCD input in the right orientation. All of that was just getting it into the orientation that we want. So now if you um, put uh, separators between here, which I honestly like to do and I like to keep them because it helps with uh, debugging if you ever need to later. Now you can input your BCD digits. So let's say we get 16 as an output, which is one, six, we go over here on the display and we get one, six, 16. So now I'm gonna paste in our giant binary to BCD thing. Paste dash A. And yep, doesn't interfere with this. Okay, all we have to do now is line up these with these. So remember this bottom one down here is a one and the one on the very right over here is a one. But first I wanna test this out because it's really cool and I miss doing this. So let's try like, I don't know, 100 or something. 64, 32, and four. Plug those in. Through this machine, it gets converted into BCD. And then shows up as 100. Or if you do the highest one over here, 32,768. You just flick one lever, goes through this whole machine, 32,768. All right, I got them all lined up. The bottom one goes into the very right, and the top one goes into the very left. And I highly, highly recommend testing each one individually, because this is a really stupid part to have a mistake on, especially with all this crazy wiring. So what I mean by that is like, test the top one, Make sure it only lights up that leftmost repeater and then go one down. Make sure it only lights up that second repeater, three down and so on all the way. But with that, we're done. Now we can test the calculator. Everything should show up on the screen. So let's try some out. Let's do uh, 25, 30, 
and 73. First put it into addition mode. We get our plus sign. And then we get our answer, 98. Now you can switch it live into subtraction mode. Negative 48. Switch it into multiplication mode. 1825. Finally, switch it into division mode. 0 0.34. Dude, this is incredible. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this. I know that not a lot of people will actually take their time to build this whole thing and I don't blame you. It's not really what this is for. I really just wanted to show off how each part worked and hope that people learn something in case they're doing something similar, computer, whatever. And yeah, just helping people get to know stuff because uh, like a lot of times when I was making this, I would need one specific component and I just searched everywhere. No one had made it before. And uh, it took a lot of engineering. A lot of, a lot of these builds were made by me first, the symbol switcher, the BCD to binary device, the multiplier. I, that, that multiplier is one of the fastest ones out there. And so yeah, I'm probably gonna make a few more videos just highlighting a few of those builds. But other than that, we're done. And yeah, thanks for watching.